Hey guys, when I started sailing, I couldn't find a video that explained me decently how sailing works. So I thought I'll make a video myself. Let's say I just bought a sailboat and I have no friends. I know it's very sad. So I'm at the dock next to my boat, no idea what to do. Step one, releasing the dock lines. Hey neighbor, can you give me a hand for a second? Okay, hardest part is over. The boat is fixed to the dock with lines. You call them ropes, but probably some fancy rich guy one day decided that when a rope goes on a boat, it's called a line. However, the boat is tied up, make everything loose except the line furthest to the front of the boat and the line furthest to the back of the boat. Furthest back we call in sailing terms, furthest aft, thanks to the fancy rich man. I'm going to call the rich man Scrooge. Thanks Scrooge. Now put the gear in neutral, if it's not already there, and start the engine. Some boats have a key and some a button. Now, one, check if water spits out of the boat. And two, check if the oil pressure is okay. Usually the meter is somewhere two thirds of the way, if you have a meter. Don't forget after you already left to occasionally check the water temperature. Should be around 190 degrees Fahrenheit, just to be sure the engine doesn't overheat. Now ask your neighbor to release the aft line and give it to you. Then ask your neighbor to release the bow line. The bow is the front of the boat. Thanks Scrooge. Since you're alone, he'll just have to furl it and hang it on deck. He'll stay there to push you away from the dock in case anything goes wrong. The reason we release the aft line first is because that's where the steering is. So, in case you swing out to the boat next to you on the other dock, for whatever reason, you can turn the steering wheel towards the dock and mow in reverse, back to where you were. Woohoo, you're free! Put the engine in gear and motor out of the dock. When maneuvering out of the dock, you're very close to other boats. To make a sharp turn, it's often easier to steer in the direction you want to go and give short bursts of high speed. Yay, first step completed! We'll motor to open water. If there's space enough, you can bring the fenders and the docking lines in and stow them away. Of course you've already downloaded Navionics on your iPhone, iPad or Android. Let's say we're in Tahiti. We're going from Tahiti to Raya Tea. Maybe choose a bit shorter trip for your first boat trip, but it gives me the time to explain all the sail setups. I already made the route. The red arrow and red line points in the direction you are going. On the chart you see a red buoy and a green buoy. In some countries when you leave the dock you have the red buoy on the right and the green buoy on the left. And in some countries it's opposite, it's very confusing, but all you need to know is that you always stay inside the two buoys on the right side. So, boats coming towards you are passing you on the left. Scrooge calls this, you pass the boats port to port. Port is the left side of the boat and starboard the right. How do you remember that? Just say port left and starboard right. The lights on the boat are red for the left side and green for the right side. The left side is called port and port is also a dessert wine that's red. So it makes sense that the color of the light on the left side is red too, right? To be honest, I just think that Scrooge drank a bit too much port when he made that up. Don't forget to look out for lobster pots floating in the water. They have a tendency to get stuck around the propeller if you motor over one. Note that somewhere in the middle is a black and yellow buoy. From that point the colors are opposite. In this case, the green buoy is going to be left instead of right. Nothing really changes, just stay close to the inside of the buoy on your right, as you were already doing. The yellow on his chart is land and the green is a reef. The white indicates deep water, light blue means shallow water, and dark blue means very shallow water. The numbers mean the minimum depth in feet it can be in that area. The water level until the bottom of your boat is called draft. So if your boat has a draft of 5 feet, then you know that if you are in 5 feet deep water, your boat is stuck. Not a good idea. Let's try to stay at minimum 20 feet if that's possible. Check the depth also on your depth meter, if you have one. Yay, we've successfully navigated to open water. Second step completed. Screw your Scrooge, no need to be rich and upper class to learn this. I assume you have an autopilot, so look at the chart to point your boat in the right direction and push that button called auto. 
Now sit back and I'll explain you the sailing setups. Your boat has a wind indicator, I'll explain it from that thing. If your boat doesn't, then look at the arrow on the mast and look at which direction it's pointing at. Depending on the type of sailboat and the direction the waves are pushing you, you might find that a slight adjustment to the standard works even better for your type of boat. But this is the standard where we start from. The wind indicator indicates 360 degrees, 180 on the left and 180 on the right. We have five directions the wind can come from. On the nose, which is between 45 and 45 degrees, close reach and close halt, which means with the wind towards us and in between 45 and 90 degrees, beam reach, which means with the wind on the side and is exactly 90 degrees, broad reach, which means with the wind from behind us and is between 91 and 179 degrees, and dead downwind, which is 180 degrees. Thanks Scrooge for making me learn all these difficult terms. But we can immediately delete option 1 and 5 because we can't sail with the wind on the nose and also not that downwind. The theory is simple. The more the wind comes from behind, the more the sails are away from the boat. The more the wind comes from the front, the more the sails are close to the boat. Of course, we always try to go as straight as possible to our destination. In the first part of our sail to right area, we're going upwind and the wind is coming on our port side, meaning from the left side towards the boat. The wind is coming from in between 45 and 90 degrees. So that means the sails have to be close to the boat. Every boat works a bit different and I'm sure you'll figure out which line is for which sail. Take the boat off the autopilot by pushing the standby button and start with turning the boat with the nose into the wind so that you have the wind at zero degrees and put the autopilot back on. This makes it easier to raise the mainsail because there's no wind pushing against the sail. Make sure the main sheet, which is the line that attaches the boom to the boat, is tied to the middle of the traveler. Jeez, thanks Scrooge. Have the main halyard with three wraps around the winch and raise the main by hand. And if it gets too hard to do it by hand, use the winch handle. Now bring the boat back in the direction where you want to go. I'm lazy, so I keep pushing that plus 10 button on the autopilot until I'm back at the course I was originally on. You can kill the engine now. Now release the main sheet a little. You know that thing that connects the boom to the boat? The boom will go from straight to about 70 degrees until it touches the shrouds. Yay, another term, thanks Scrooge. The shrouds are those metal things that hold the mast to the boat. People also call them standing rigging. Since we're throwing terms anyway, the thing from the mast to the bow is called forestay and the thing from the mast aft backstay. This is the whole construction that holds the mast on the boat. Okay, back to setting up the sail. Since the boom will go from straight to about 70 degrees, and since you know that the more upwind the boat goes, the closer the sail is to the boat, we'll just let it out about 30 degrees. Main sheet line around the winch before letting it out. That's just as a protection, because we don't want to hurt our hands. Open the cleat and let it out. You always let out the main sheet on the opposite side of the wind direction. Wind comes from left, so sail goes right. You don't really have to think about that, because once you release the main sheet, the sail will automatically go in that direction. Yay, main sail is set up. Now we're going to set up the head sail. There's somewhere a furling line, which you use to roll the sail back in. That thing is probably tight now, so we have to release that thing and clear the line. On this boat it's tight with a cleat. Now make sure the lazy sheet, which is the sheet we don't use, is free. For some reason we call these specific line sheets. Thanks Scrooge. Now wrap the sheet on the starboard or right side around the cleat three times and pull the headsail out. Same idea as mainsail. When going upwind, the sail is close to the boat. When going downwind, the sail is far away from the boat. Obviously, the tighter I sheet in, the closer the sail is to the boat. Since we're going upwind, we'll sheet in pretty tight. Let's say that too tight is 0% and too loose is 100%. So we'll work between 30 and 70% of that. Let's put it on 30% tightness. Congratulations, you have set up the sails. Now you're looking at the sails and you're thinking, I have no idea if this is good or not. So we're going to do a basic sail trim. 
The two things you need for basic seal trimming are the sheet lads with a car you can move forward and backwards, and of course the sheet that we just used to pull out the hat seal. Step one is to take the sheet off its protection. Leave it three times wrapped around the winch. Now look at the hat seal and release the sheet a bit until the seal starts flapping. Yes, I know, you could have done this immediately when you were setting up the seal. The moment it starts flapping, you tighten the sheet back just until it stops flapping. Perfect, that's it. Now sometimes you notice that the back line of the sail flaps and the bottom line doesn't. This means that the car is too far aft. Which is logical, because if you pull from further back, most of the tension is on the bottom line of the sail and not on the back line of the sail. And if you pull from all the way forward, you're pulling down, so most of the tension is on the back line of the sail. What you want is an equal tension. You can only know how to make it equal by trying it out. Obviously when the bottom line flaps and not the back line, the car is too far forward. For safety you might have to furl the hat sail back in and then change the position of the car. At least if you want to keep your fingers without pain. So roll the hat sail back in by releasing a little bit of the sheet each time and rolling or furling the hat sail back in. Of course this is easier when you're not alone. Now change the position of the car and do the sail trim process from the beginning. Also if your sail has telltales, they are supposed to go straight backwards. But this is very dependent on the weather conditions whether this works well or not. I think that's more than enough to know to get you confident on the way. So we're going to read a book now about other related sailing things or we'll just enjoy the view. I mean, that's why we do this all in the first place. Oh no, the wind shifted and I was just getting into this book. We're fully on beam reach now. The wind is 90 degrees to our beam. You remember? We put the mainsail 30 of the 70 degrees out and the head sail we put as tight as 30 of the maximum 70%. So now we put the mainsail on 50 degrees and the head sail on 50% and we trim the head sail again. You don't have to relocate the car every time. We're not doing a race here. It's easy, right? Back to my book. Oh no, the wind shifted to around 150 degrees. What a coincidence, now I can explain you what to do when we're going downwind. We kind of have three choices depending on the wind and how lazy we are. When going downwind, the mainsail blocks the wind of the headsail. Today there's enough wind, like 50 knots, and the waves are pushing me and I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just going to bring the mainsail down. This boat has a roll furling system, so I'm opening the furl lines and I'm just furling it in. The head sail was out to 50%, now I'm letting it out to 70%. The maximum I can let it out to keep the sail full. Back to my book. The wind just dropped, only 10 knots now. Okay, fine, I'll get up again. We're going wing on wing. The wind comes from our port side, our left side, behind us. The mainsail goes as usual, opposite to the wind. The mainsail was 50 degrees out the last time we used it. We're putting it back up and since we're going downwind now, we're letting it out all the way. Don't worry if the sail hits the shrouds, that's normal. You want to add a boom preventer now. A boom preventer is a line that goes from the boom to the side of the boat. It makes sure that when the wind suddenly changes or the autopilot stops working that the boom not suddenly slams from one side to the other side and breaks your skull or throws you overboard. Now, since the main sail takes the wind out of the head sail when going downwind, we're going to do something special with the head sail. First, Furl the head sail back in. Now, we're going to bring it opposite of the main sail. But to keep the sail filled with wind, we have to put it further away from the boat than we normally do. To do this, we need a whisker pole. Some whisker poles lie on deck and some hang on the mast. So get that thing loose and attach the whisker pole on one side to the mast. There should be a railing with a system to attach it to. It's attached to the mast now. When there's no halyard already fixed to your whisker pole, attach one. One that's coming out of the middle of your mast. Okay, done that. Now if you want to be safe, attach two lines to the front end of the pole. We'll use them later. Next step is to attach the other sheet than the sheet that we were just using to the end of the whisker pole. It's more difficult to do this alone, but you can. Now raise the pole both at the mast and with the topping lift or halyard, whatever you're using, until it's about level to the boat and the same height as the clue of the sail. When the whisker pole almost hits the shrouds, you stop. Now you go back and attach one line straight down. This one makes sure that the sail isn't pulling the pole up. And the other line to the front. This line makes sure that the whisker pole doesn't hit the shrouds. 
Yes, done. Now go back to the cockpit. Wrap the sheet around the winch and pull it in. Back to my book. Looks cool, right? If the wind drops further, your third option is to take down the head sail, meaning furling it back in and then taking away the whisker pole, and then put up a light sail, a janneker or a spinnaker, if you have one. The way these things work is they're in a bag, in the bag is a sock. The top of the sock you later connect to a halyard that comes out of the front middle of the mast. But do the other lines first, otherwise that line is just annoyingly bungling there. The sock has two ends on the bottom. One end with two sheets, and on the other end you can attach a line. For some Scrooge reason we call this line the tag line. Usually it's a black one. So attach the tag line outside everything to the socket. Now connect the sheet outside everything to an available block and winch. You might have to use the same winch as for the normal sheet. Now attach the halyard to the socket. Pull the socket up and tighten the halyard. Now there are two lines bungling there. With one of the two, you pull the socket up and release the spinnaker. Next step is to release or tighten the tack line and the sheet until the bottom of the spinnaker is about level to the boat. That's it, you've done it. Great job. Back to my book. If you want to bring the spinnaker back in because the wind is either not strong enough or too strong or the wind direction change, don't forget to release the tack line and sheet first. Otherwise you won't be able to pull the sock back around it. Some people also use a whisker or a spinnaker pole the same way as we set up the whisker pole earlier, but that's a personal preference. The wind has all the time been on our port side or left side, so of course when it's on our starboard or right side everything is exact opposite. Congratulations, you know how to sail. But what if I'm on my course and the wind is on my nose or from that ahead? Well, then you just can't go in a straight line and you have to zigzag. If the wind is on your nose, you obviously have to go in the upwind course. Then when your destination is in the middle of the beam, you zigzag to the other upwind course. We call this zigzagging tacking. Since you're alone, it's easiest to just furl the headsail in and then bring the mainsail to the middle of the boat. If the boat was 45 degrees off the wind, now steer the boat 45 degrees off the wind to the other side. If that's done, let the sails out exactly opposite of what you had on a previous tack. If the wind is dead ahead, you obviously have to zigzag broad reach course. Zigzagging in a broad reach course is called jibing. Getting crazy from all these terms already? You know what to do, just say damn you Scrooge. To do this the easiest and safest way, just furl in the head sail. Release the boom preventer and bring the main in the middle. Now adjust your new course. Let the main out and attach the boom preventer and also put the whisker pole on the other side of the boat and let the heads out the same way as you did before. But I'm a little bit scared when the wind picks up. Understandable. The less wind there is, the more sail surface we want and the more wind there is, the less sail surface we want. So if you're on a beam reach and the wind picks up, let's say around 20 knots of wind, you reef the sails, meaning you make the sails smaller. Since almost all boats have roll furl head sails, it makes more sense to make that one smaller first, because that one you can make smaller from the cockpit. Just furl it in, as much as you need until you feel safer. Reefing the mainsail of a roll furl mainsail goes the same way, although sometimes the wind is too strong and you have to bring the boat back with the nose into the wind to reef it. When you have a normal mainsail, you probably have to bring the boat with the nose into the wind. Those sails usually only have two reefing points. That are those holes with a line to it horizontally in the sail on about one third and two third of the sail. Bring the sail down to that point, attach the sail hole closest to the mast and the hook, tighten the reefing line, usually it's a red or black one, and then bring the sail back up so it's tight again. Okay, I'm going to watch a movie now, I'm tired of reading a book. Oh no, there are suddenly all these boats around me. Help, what should I do? There are different rules for different types of boats, which you can read all about in the navigation rules book. But if you know these four things, you should be fine. Thing number one. 
Thing number one we call the mouse. Boat comes straight towards us. We keep each other on our left side. Logical, you do the same in a car, right? I mean, unless you're British or something. Thing number two. Thing number two we call the snake. If the boat doesn't come straight towards us, the snake eats the mouse. We call this the snake because the sound a snake makes sounds like wind. The snake goes like this. Do we know absolutely sure that we both are sailing? Yes, we do. Okay, well, you got the wind on your starboard or right side, you have right away. Meaning, you don't have to do anything. Just relax and hold the same course. The other sailboat with the wind on the left or port side has to avoid us. Loser. If we got the wind on our port side or left side, we gotta avoid him. Kinda makes sense, you know, right goes before left. So if we got the wind on our left and we can't really see on which side the other boat the wind has, just avoid him, that's logical, right? There's probably some smart ass looking at my video and already thinking, yeah, but what if we both have the wind on the same side? Well, what do you think yourself? You're sailing on wind. If you are closer to where the wind blows than your neighbor, you block his wind and he needs winds to steer his boat. So, of course the boat closest to the wind has to adjust his course and the one further away doesn't. Jeez, come on. Thing number three. Thing number three we call the shark. If only one of us is sailing, the shark eats a snake. The shark goes like this. If I'm sailing and the other boat is motoring, I can hold course because he has to avoid me. Unless the other motoring boat is much bigger than you. So if you're not sure, just call him over on the radio on channel 16. Thing number four we call the wheel. Because the wheel is biggest and this is the biggest rule. If it's different than before, the wheel eats the shark. The wheel goes like this. In any other situation, so we're motoring or it's dark or we just can't be sure that both of us are sailing, you just look straight ahead and ask yourself, is this boat going towards my right side, starboard bow, or left side, port bow? Is he coming from the right, then he has right away and I must avoid him. Is he coming from the left, then I have right away and he must avoid me. You know, right goes before left. Another way to remember this is, if I see a boat over my starboard bow coming towards me, I see his red light. Red means alarm, look out, my responsibility. When I look over my poor bow and see a boat coming towards me, the light of him that I'm seeing is green. Green means chill, don't worry, I'm okay with my course. Great, we safely passed those boats. Back to my movie. Yes, I see land. Okay, let's be safe. Start the engine and bring all the sails down. Okay, I see a green and red buoy. Let's go inside those things and stay close to the right side of it. Ooh, we have arrived. Oh no, what now? I have to anchor. Okay, let's go to that area that's called Anchorage and find a place that's around 20 feet deep. If that's not possible, you have to go deeper. I found it. Okay, let's drop the anchor with remote control or manual. Usually an anchor chain has different colors or zip ties on it every 20 or 25 feet, so you can count how much you've let out already. You can drop the first 20 feet fast and then a bit slower so the chain doesn't pile up at the bottom. Since it's 20 feet deep, we're going to let out 100 feet. To be safe, it's 1 to 5. 5 times as much chain as the depth. But let's start with 80 feet first. We've let out 80 feet. The boat is going to turn with the nose into the wind now out of itself. Now wait a little while and pick two physical points, like a house or a tree. Maybe one in front of the boat and one on the side, so that you can see if the anchor is holding or if you are dragging. Dragging means that when the chain is tight, the boat still moves the anchor over the bottom of the sea. If you keep dragging, you have to re-anchor. If you're holding, meaning the boat has come to a stop, you go to the cockpit and put the boat in reverse to about 3000 RPM. If you're still holding, you should be fine. Now attach a bridle or line in between the chain and the boat and let the last 20 feet out, until the chain hangs loose. This way the windlass doesn't have to hold the tension. Congratulations, you finished your first trip and learned the basics of sailing. No reason to go back home, you might as well continue sailing around the world. Take some sailbooks with you and the rest you'll learn on the ways. But don't cross an ocean yet. 
First get to know your boat a little and make sure you have a bunch of spare parts and materials to fix your boat on the ways. Also don't forget to stock up with some food and lots of rum. Good luck and have fun!